Welcome. All righty, guys. What's up? Another hey. man. What's up? <laughs> so we have kids upstairs, just so everyone knows if you're joining this right now. So I'm <laughs> yeah. going to have to get up and make sure no one's fighting. So if someone looks at someone, they're going to scream. So I have to go up and make sure they're not looking at each other. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. So nice. forgive my uh, interruptions. <laughs> that's see. the thing. So we're streaming. It doesn't look. Oh, yep, we are. It? Cool. It looks like. Are we on yet? So tell us what we're doing here, Anthony. What's, what's what we're doing today? Today we are. I decided that it'd be a great opportunity to bring in our the pitmaster's wife's and spouse's husband. <laughs> <laughs> that's Todd. There. Um, let's just talk about their spouses. perspective about barbecue. You know what I mean? Like us pitmaster guys, we we go through and we get emails and book gigs and all that other stuff. And then for me, I forget to tell my wife, Hey, I have, I'm barbecuing this weekend. And then she oh, yeah. kind of gets upset That's sometimes. A fact. <laughs> but we'll go, we'll talk about that today. And then Todd, he's on a whole nother level. His wife's like, um, I got to go to Texas to film a TV show. So <laughs> I'll be back in a week type scenario. So <laughs> speaking of which tonight you guys are on uh beat Bobby Flay, right? Yeah, I mean, you say you guys, but it's her. Um, <laughs> you were there. You were in the audience. I was there, and uh, if it shows it, there's a really interesting, awkward experience with me. I hope they show it. So, <laughs> yeah, she was in the middle of cooking. So they give her the secret ingredient. You know, I don't know if you've seen the show, but so two chefs have to go against each other in order to be able to have the chance to cook against Bobby Flay. And so the two chefs were cooking, Susie being one of them, who's my wife. Hi, I'm Todd Bullock, Susie Bullock's husband. Hey, Grill, hey. Anyway, um, so she's cooking the secret ingredient, which she's never cooked before. Bobby Flay, she's standing by her. I'm just like right above her up in the audience. Bobby Flay's standing by her. He looks up at me and he says, does she cook like this all the time at home? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> like my... My dumb brain went to the secret ingredient. She's never made it, but yes, she cooks like this all. It's incredible. She cooks like this all the time. Oh, anyway. <laughs> and then after the after they left, um, they it was like like a break. They came over, like, all right, we need to refilm with her husband. And so they came over and filmed me saying no like eight different ways. It was oh, so funny. oh no. I'm like, this is gonna be so embarrassing. Oh, like wow. anyway. But yeah, tonight at eight o'clock at Mountain Time on Food Network, she's on Beat Bobby Flay. So that was really fun. We were able to take our daughter, our 10-year-old daughter. She stood off on the side. She couldn't be on the camera, but she was out in the audience too. So it was it was really cool. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Sounds fun. In Colony, <laughs> uh, Chef Hunan was on there and he beat Bobby Flay. So yeah. That was it was cool. He was telling us all about it, and uh, it was really cool. I, I want to go on there one day. I would. Uh, ooh, I actually, I don't think I could do it. I really could. <laughs> it was intense. Like I was shaking for Susie. It was. It was. Insane. You'll have to watch and see. But it's. Yeah, I was. I was. I was a mess. I'm so. the kind of guy that cooks great when I'm by myself. But if I'm put in, like for example, I would cook like just let's just say spaghetti, right? Just crush <laughs> it. Boom. Here, family. Here's the best spaghetti. I've ever cooked <laughs> then my mom would sister my brothers all everyone would come over and I'm like oh here you guys here's the worst spaghetti I've ever made in my whole life because I just get so into my head and nervous I would just <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's Alrighty, why so, we don't do this so, so we hit with kind of what Todd's experience and now for Kimmy Rusty comes up to you about a month ago and says hey I want to take over this barbecue restaurant what, what process through your brain there I missed it. I'm sorry. My one year old was talking to me. No, so I just say too, but like, uh, no one's counting. Oh. What what was it like for you when Rusty came up to you and said, Hey, I'm gonna take over this barbecue restaurant? What, and so what, just so I'm kinda like Todd. I was I was kind of retired by my wife. Um yeah. so I didn't work for three and a half years. So you guys should know that too. So I was home constantly. Um Kimmy went out and did nails, you know, because that's what something she loves to do. So I was home with the kids. I was a stay-at-home dad. So that that's we can pretense with that. So go ahead. <laughs> um, I was actually really excited because he's really passionate about barbecue, and I knew it was something he wanted to like turn into a career. So the opportunity, I think, was cool for him to learn and like grow from on someone else's dime in a way. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like he had to start his own thing and invest all of this money to get the learning experience out of it. So I think that part was cool and. Um, I kind of liked the idea of him 
this is so it sounds so rude <laughs> <laughs> but like being away from me for you know a certain amount of time during the day because we were together for 24 7 i feel like for way too long you know what i mean and i i mean i like it we we get along great but it's just one of those things where i like to have my own time at home and i like to be the one in charge and the, i don't have to run anything by anyone i want to do something on me i'm doing it you know so it is it was exciting i think him going back to work uh just so I could have my own space and time at home. Again. I make her lazy because I'm just a lazy person. If you let me, and yeah. so I, I rub off. On everyone's it. feeling that now. Yeah. I know. Having to be at home, it's yeah. like like what Tracy said. I was like, oh my gosh, I would kill to be home alone. I work with my kids and stuff like that. Like, it is absolutely, you're absolutely right. For three to four to five months, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, nice. it's not the same issue. And I made her kind of, but now that I'm not there, I mean, she's just up and running around doing all these things. So it's, it's been cool for us, for me, you know, to get out and do something, especially that I love doing. And I like, so. I, I don't know. I like to see him in his, like, in his element, you know, like barbecue is his thing. It's what he loves to do. It's what he's learned everything about. And like, is really, really passionate about learning all he can about. So for me, I'm like excited that he's not just, you know, at a job that he mm -hmm. care about. That he has. Right. Yeah. And then, then what about you, Tracy wife? Um, she's my number one sponsor for my barbecue team, by the way. Just so y'all know. <laughs> yep. I am. I my award winning sunflowers. I sponsor <laughs> the sponsorship out of that. Yeah. So what's it like to being in the, I guess, drug along through this barbecue scene? <laughs> I mean, first, I probably felt like I was being drug along. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I can't hear myself that well. So anyway, um, but because I didn't understand it, I'd never been exposed to all that before. So the first time he came to me, you know, what, four years ago now or whatever, and said, I want to do this barbecue thing. I thought, oh, it's just a weekend thing. You know, he's just going to go cook some food and come home and that's it. And then he won and then it was history. So I, you know, it's been fun. It's been an eye opener. I have not ever been around that lifestyle of cooking of any kind or competition type stuff that has to do with food at all in my life. So it's, it has been very eye opening. I actually really don't like to cook at all so i feel like we're, i'm we're a lot really same. excited <laughs> i'm like yes yeah, same here like I'm i thought like, I, I thought good. it would be like a fun and hobby thing for the weekend yeah. and i absolutely yeah. love cooking as well so i'm on the same page as you right now <laughs> i'm sure todd can relate like yeah. you know <laughs> this is it's a lifestyle it's not like this is a you know where where these guys are all at it's like it, this isn't a hobby anymore it's a whole lifestyle it can be either there's lots of people out there I know that do it as a hobby, but I love that he loves to do this because I get free food. I mean, yeah. I'm off the hook. <laughs> Lucky for us here. I mean, it's kind of, we're both really, really into it. So we, we both, I mean, we both got into it kind of watching barbecue pit masters season one back in the day, like 10 plus years ago, where <laughs> I grew up thinking I hated barbecue because it was just nasty crock pot chicken with nasty craft barbecue sauce. I'm like, yeah. no, I don't, I don't like barbecue. That's gross. <laughs> but then when I'm watching these guys cook like Tuffy and Johnny Trigg and those guys, I'm like, Oh, that looks so good. And I want to learn how to do that. So we both were like totally into it and we wanted to get into it. And then she got the opportunity to work for Traeger grills and help them build a recipe blog on their website like eight years ago. So a couple years after we started watching barbecue pit masters and trying stuff out on our gas grill and stuff like that, really learning like what, what it was all about. Like we didn't even know about offset smokers versus, you know, drum cookers versus pellet. Like we had no idea. And so we just get this pellet smoker dropped off on our front porch. And then just like that, we're learning how to cook all the basics and I'm in heaven, just pure yeah. heaven. Right? Oh yeah. So. I definitely appreciate the science of it all. I didn't realize that there was so many steps and like the judging and the, just the, the science of it really. I'm a nurse practitioner by trade. So, you know, my life is kind of like science all the time. And so I do appreciate the fact that there's more to this than just, you know, throwing it together. I try to tell people, I'm like, my husband does professional barbecue competitions. And I'm like, but this is way more than you think it is. Yeah. It's so much more intricate than you think. It's not just like, you know, what you would do at home. It is next level 
the most complicated process you could think of. Like right. it has to be written down and done over and over and over and over and over again and still referenced later during the competitions. Like it's crazy how much they put into one rack of ribs. I mean, it tastes right. insane. Like it's so good. And so you can definitely taste the difference on how much like time is put into preparing it but yeah. it's just i try to explain to people it's not like it's not what you think it's so much more intricate like the boxes the turn-ins the timing the like everything the temperature is down to like the degree like everything is so much more intricate than people realize and i mean i didn't even know when rusty was like i'm gonna do professional barbecue like this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a team i'm yeah. going for this and I, I like i had no idea at that point what i was in for like there's i mean i guess there's people that have way. Is Susie the one? Hey, girl, he's that that's yeah. the one that has all the grills in the backyard that that I'm. Well, Rusty yeah. has me way too many smokers. <laughs> right? yeah. They all have way too many, and then they're like, Can I "Why get another one?" <clears throat> no, oh, sorry. We're, we're getting more. I mean, it just never ends. Like I, that's what I'm no. saying. I didn't realize what I was in for, and like he, I mean, he would be like, "Okay, I'm gonna do this. I promise. If we get this, I'm always, I'm super supportive of it. Trust me, I really am." But like, there's no more room. I feel like, and Rusty's like, "Let's build room. Let's like mm -hmm. more Let's move. Like, make a barbecue area." I mean, I'm think over about here, this like, though. We live on an acre. How much barbecue? How many pits? Can we yeah, make? It's dangerous. About about three quarters of an acre. 700 ish no no uh, but i i didn't realize what what we were getting into it is really an entire lifestyle and yeah. we are we're yeah. in it for the long haul you know tracy we're stuck yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well todd todd you had a professional <laughs> career you were an accountant correct yeah cpa yeah. man I, I don't know how i pulled that <laughs> off but i did it <laughs> and, then, and then this whole next level thing came up and you actually ended up leaving that career and pretty much being coming the back end of Susie, you know, full production recording. You, you do it all. You are pretty much your production team. I know wow. you guys get some help, but you literally take it yeah, on we, a huge role. We, while I was still doing the CPA thing, she wanted to get into filming videos of her. First off, it was just like the little hands and pans video, one minute quick videos. And so we just set it up and went for it. And I, I've got friends that work at Adobe. So they gave me a, super duper like discount on adobe premiere pro and i watched youtube videos and learned how to edit videos and they're not pretty but they went viral like crazy millions and millions of views on watching us make jerky and brisket so um <laughs> that was kind of the that was the beginning of when things really started to grow but there was two to three years behind that of Susie putting up hundreds of recipes on her on her website so that was the foundation was Susie's years of hard work working for nothing basically. Um, so I was, I call it, we called it her jobby cause it was like a hobby, but it was bringing in a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, it, that's, that's kind of when it took off is when we really started doing those videos and it's kind of weird cause she, she didn't understand, I think at first what it would be like starting a food blog and entering the barbecue world. Um, but it's turned out to kind of, be a beautiful marriage of how it's worked together because she's been able to to put out incredible recipes that rank really high in google searches that, that we consistently get super positive feedback on so i mean it, it's just it's just been incredible to watch it really has it's been fun yeah those well, videos man, you you crush those I, I think it's great the way that you do them they're really cool well, awesome. now, now i don't do any of those i we we hire out the production and the editing and yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm just I just kidding. literally sit there in the back on my phone, and they're like, "Todd, come in and eat the food." I'm like, "Okay." Hell yeah. <laughs> so, right, so what yeah. is your role then currently with Gay Grill Hay? Are you doing like marketing? What it's what is your role? Um, I'm kind of she she pulls me in on you know when we're talking different things like we we build out the Grill Squad, which is the online barbecue school. Um, I was involved with some of the back end of that as far as talking how we're building that out. I mean, it's all her. She drives everything. I'm, it's just kind of an advisory role. Obviously, I run all our books because I have the accounting background. I work closely with the attorneys and the like our financial planner and our CPA, our tax CPA, you know, so I kind of manage all that. Um, but mainly my role is with Patio Provisions, our product company, because we uh, she wanted to bottle some of her seasonings and sauces to sell. And so I did all the sourcing for that. I found the co-packers and the bottles and the lids and the labels and everything. Um, helped Good set up job. the website. Yeah, that was a lot of work. So, 
And now that's now me and my friend, I've hired my friend to help me run that because inventory management's a nightmare. Um, and as we grow diff and different things. So I'm just kind of like plugged in on Hey Grill Hay and Grill Squad kind of minimally on the back end. Yeah. I don't really do a lot, um, but people seem to like it and think it was funny when I came in and tasted the food. And so they just, I'm taste test Todd. That's, that's what she <laughs> called me. So. <laughs> Todd, if you ever need any help with inventory management, let me know. I manage I like, millions and millions of dollars just... worth of product. All <laughs> right. That's another job. I can, actual job. I, I can help you out with that. Gosh. <laughs> it's a nightmare, man. It's like if, no, I it's give, a... if I give one bottle of sweet rub out of my garage, it throws everything off if I don't track it properly. It's insane. Right. Yeah. There's an easy way. Speaking of the girl squad real quick, I, just, I signed up for that um, two weeks ago, and it's nice. brilliant. So if you guys are out there, check it out like you know I, I study barbecue that's all i do but i learned a ton from watching those videos so um if you guys are out there you go to the grill squad and sign up it's it's actually not very expensive at all for a whole year and you get a lot of videos and a lot of how to's so oh, that's cool. i would highly recommend it as yeah yeah it, it was funny because there there have been so many times where she's talked about i think the one i teased her about was I don't know if it was turkey or like the first time I heard her say collagen and, and all this stuff. She'll just like throw, <laughs> she'll throw out like these like cooking things and specific barbecue things like that. I've never heard of. I'm like, what? like I, I make fun of her that she's making stuff up on the spot, but she's like, no, like I read about it. I wanted to know about it. So I researched it and I read these books Maybe and I did this like that science. You gotta love yeah. it. So she's like, she dug in. And when you watch these master classes in the grill squad, like she spits out all this detailed information about what's happening with the meat at certain temperatures and what certain seasonings and salts can do. And this, I'm just like, wow, it's, it's incredible. So yeah, she's, she's really, she knows her stuff and she's figured it out and she's just super brilliant. And I, I really, am just super proud of her. It's incredible. Now, what about you, Kimmy? What is your role in salt city barbecue team? <laughs> Uh, what, what is my role currently or what does yeah. Rusty want my role to be? Yeah, what is, I guess both. <laughs> <laughs> he mates, this is so mean. And I told him that and he, but he's told them, he, he says, if my wife ever decides to do barbecue, you guys are off the team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you are so mean. Don't Chad say that. We love Chad and Jared. We love his barbecue team. But, um, I have been to I a couple barbecue competitions now, one with the kids and one without the kids. Without the kids was way better. Um, it's yeah. fun. It's a really fun environment. I mean, my role is very minimal and I'm still learning, like just from being around it. Not that I've like thrown myself into it and and tried to learn. I'm just, just from observing, just from being there when they practice and being at the competitions. Um, but I, I really, I really do enjoy being there. I'd like to be more involved. After the last competition I went to, I was like, okay, I'm on the team now. Everybody move. We're going in. We're getting serious. I'm just trying to win. Like, I just like, yeah. <laughs> once I, you're I, in the environment, I you're like. I want to taste every rub now. I literally and everything was like, you no, no, you guys need to, it. you guys literally need to make these rubs for me. And I'm going to taste all of them. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with them. Like, I was like, I'm, I'm about it now. You know, like once you're in the environment, you're like, okay, well now I'm in yeah. it to win. That competitiveness yeah. comes out. More, not like this. This is good, which is usually what I do. Which well, the, make ribs. I'm like, oh, I like it. It's, good. it's funny because yeah. I went to uh, when I started this this job at um, Bandera. I would come back and you know I talk about you know what they're doing, what I'm doing, the changes and stuff like that, and I wouldn't even say anything. I'm like, oh, they're doing the ribs like this, and she would just go off. She, I even know how to do it. <laughs> and she's just explaining every you don't you don't cook that to a temperature, you probe tender the truth. That, like, she's like, I'm like, where did you get all that? I'm telling you, I just learned because it is he is I'm not kidding you, Rusty is the guy. I, I wake up in the morning, I come out, and there is a barbecue show on TV. I go in the kitchen to get breakfast, he has one on his phone. <laughs> I love it. Phone and one on the TV. I kid you not, you guys. I kid oh, you yeah. not. That would be Anthony too. Yeah. yeah. Is with so I was watching some other barbecue guy on TV really? while he's doing his barbecue. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you your, well, I mean, yeah. yeah, you're around it so much that you learn that stuff. Like you pick up on it, then all of yeah. a sudden you're like, oh, this goes to this temperature. You have to, you know, watch for this in the meat, or it's supposed to feel like that. Like you just learn stuff as you pick it up. Yeah. Like you pick it up as you're around and then it. You'll like correct other people. Like I've noticed people yeah. be like, Yeah, I cooked these for so long. I'm like, you don't cook to 
you cooked a, a temperature, not time, you know, and <laughs> got in and start telling him stuff like I know what I'm talking about, but you do pick up stuff and don't take us to like some chain like barbecue place. That <laughs> is a big mistake because right? like you literally take apart that down. entire menu and have yeah. them shut down by the time we leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man, that's so true. I can't well, even eat like chain barbecue now i go out and i'm like what the heck is this there's a huge difference between competition and you know just what else is kind of out there you guys have probably talked about that before but well it's kind of it's kind of funny here rusty um these two two ladies here talking about how serious they are at the competitions but it's really (laughs) you and i i know the last competition in saint george my wife was walking around with my son Going to the farmer's market, checking out. Rumors have it. Kimmy was down there in Arizona playing cornhole tournaments. And- okay. Well, <laughs> oh, and you have fun. Actually, important, important to know. So there are the competition. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a margarita bar they're taking full advantage of. Jerry, <laughs> the only team member I have down there because Chad couldn't make it, goes and plays drunken cornhole with my wife. Meanwhile, I'm trying to do an SDA comp going, Jared, bro, I can really use someone to hold my duck fat cat spray. <laughs> Man. you know i got nobody me and matt hansen from crooked pigs are trying to like use each other's stuff and we after that we don't know who's is who's and what i use i was trying to win in cornhole <laughs> I got some Olympic cornhole players that were right. important. Sure. hey it's promotion she's gonna talk about you when she's done when she wins. <laughs> but uh as for you tracy what's your role with the team i know she's she's she doesn't pull the all-nighters with us um because she have, she but. she has a lot going on with just with her job and everything like that but she does play a key role in the team as well go ahead and talk about that well i i do the boxes i am the box designer so i i have a ton of fun doing that i'm probably way more nerdy and way more picky about it than most people really care to be but i I guess I kind of have the luxury of doing that because I am not doing the other stuff. So I'm not going to lie. I show up at like, you know, 10, 30, 11. And, but it takes me a good half hour, 40 minutes to do a box. It used to be longer than that. Just put my headphones on, listen to some actual decent tunes that aren't on his stereo. Hip hop. And <laughs> <Heard that. laughs> Rusty and you guys would probably like my tunes better, but I, I agree, probably. Yeah. So I am but yeah, I just I I design I do the boxes. I use parsley because I like to just kind of make sure it's all perfect and it all matches and it looks good. So that's my job. It's fun. <laughs> but like at home though, like just giving a home, I think Kimmy now I'm like Hey, I'm going to cook some ribs. And she's like, Ugh. whereas like <laughs> a year ago, she's like, oh, ribs. Yeah. You know, and right, I'm like, right. got some you steak from gotta step up your game on the creativity. Maybe, yeah. maybe Susie can help you with that. <laughs> That's why I have to watch stuff like Susie's stuff is because I'm trying to do that. This is the problem. He cooks ribs and only ribs. He like gets so focused on the meat that there's no sides. And I'm yes. like, how yeah. are we eating yeah. with this? I Just forget. ribs, you know? And I'm like, I can't do this again. I, I love them. I think they're great. But when you eat them like multiple times a week for months on end, it's like, okay, we got all these people <laughs> out there like commenting like, wow, really? You're complaining about that? <laughs> yeah, everyone else is probably like, you brat, you spoiled brat. You don't even have to cook for yourself. And that's 100% true. I am a spoiled brat. It is what it is. We're spoiled. I'm interested in Todd because you guys cook constantly and it's constant barbecue. What does it look like when you're not filming? What are you guys eating? Um, that, That's what I was just going to say is it's like it's it's usually we're finding something. If if we're not doing low and slow, like it's a quick dinner, Um, I would say still four out of four seven nights we're cooking on one of the grills whether it's over charcoal or or on the pellet smoker or um yeah one of those two like we have a weber kettle that we use all the time um um she's always she's always thinking sides always thinking what's gonna go with it like we need to definitely team up yeah so she's i mean I, i i help where i can but she looks at me like what should we do and i'm like i'm always making the joke Hold on, let me call my friend who's a professional barbecue food. Oh wait, that's you. Like <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what to do because I have no idea. So we right. we've, we've all so when we go shopping, we've always got Brussels sprouts or potatoes or something that we're and I'm usually chopping up fruit and vegetables and I'm kind of running getting the sides prepared a little bit. But 
yeah, like it's um, it, it's there's definitely some misses, but I'd say ninety nine percent of the time it's like even our kids are just like, mom, what the heck? Like this is so good, you know. We're all just yeah. stunned and floored all the time. Like it really that's the tr- that's just the truth. So, but but some nights it's like I, I'm cooking, I'm boiling noodles and melting cheese. Like I'm just cooking a quick. <laughs> my kids love my mac and cheese. It's literally boiled noodles with milk and salt and pepper and cheese and throw it in the microwave and they like love it so they like beg for dad's mac and cheese i think they just like the simplicity sometimes of it but yeah. go ahead and make a rest shot or a recipe and a video of that and <laughs> i should that'd yeah, be so yeah. rad <laughs> <laughs> the, the most delicate recipe you'll ever make yeah. right right <laughs> add it to my repertoire of things like that. i'm fortunate that my kids won't eat i'm a, like i cook at home and i'm like I've just made this delicious. I only spend like days making food, right? Because I just get into stuff, and then they won't eat a bite. But every time I smoke anything, my kids are like, "What barbecue? Hell yeah!" That's so they they yeah. love the barbecue. So that helps a lot. Well, and yeah. for all the people out there, probably listening to this, I know you guys have lots of topics and everything, but that's what's so cool about barbecue is that it really is way more versatile than people think. That's probably one of the other things that's really surprised me is the versatility of it. It's like, there are so many things you can do. Our youngest um, son was a vegetarian for a while. And so we learned how to do, you know, the shiitakes and all that. There's all kinds of vegetarian recipes you can do there. There really is a variety. And I'm sure, you know, Todd and his wife are probably a lot better at, you know, maybe putting some of those varieties out there but there it's fun it's fun to really kind of use your creativity and you can do it all year and you can do it you know people you don't have to be a pro you can you can have fun with this yeah. but i did bring him back around my pulled pork brought him back around to barbecue <laughs> again <laughs> there you go yeah i, I just okay. figured about sides because like you know it's like Ben says, if you could cook a brisket right, who needs sides? And that's where I'm at. I'm just here for the meat, man. I don't give a crap. I'm like, crap, just might add some veggies to this. Well, do you see what Chad said? I tell my wife the sides are hers to do. Meats are more important. Maybe this is what's happening is I'm dropping the ball. Yeah. You know, maybe it's on me. Maybe that's this what is they're going to say. Us. I think this, this is going to be good for us. <laughs> hey, this isn't fair. <laughs> maybe mac and cheese recipe. <laughs> right there. Maybe it is. Yeah. Hey, the sides, if you're going to cook a brisket, my sides are um pickles onions and uh sliced like pickled jalapeno <laughs> like and then just every other bite you eat some of those sides you know <laughs> there's some white bread right <laughs> just the acidic like cut out the cut the fat down a little bit you know like that's what i'm all about see look at there you go with those fancy words here you're yeah, learning yeah. i'm learning <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah, but it's, it's important to do those i, I just always forget because i think my problem is, is i'm always cooking something different you know i'm I'll get on these obsessions and then I'll try something new and I get so up in my head about it. And I just completely forget. Cause I'm like, okay, I've never cooked this before. Let me just baby it. And then I'm like, go to eat it. And I'm like, Oh crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so I guess my next question is, I know you have Todd. Um, you've just been kind of watching in the background then boom, you show up with the salt city drum smoker in your backyard and that is your baby. Um, you've, You've tried to get your hands a little into the barbecue, just backyard barbecue. Um, I know my wife really hasn't. I don't know if you have, Kimmy, but Todd, go ahead and explain that transition going from just watching and actually jumping onto a pit. Sure. Um, I when, sh- when we first got our f- first smoker, I was still working, you know, 40 to 60 hour weeks. And so really on the weekends, I think I was spending a lot of time at our local barbecue pit stop, getting to know those guys at the, at the Lehigh, Utah spot, just incredible guys giving me all the information I needed and helping us with different rubs and stuff. But for the most part, like if I, if, if I wanted to do it, this is what I'd do is I'd go, I knew, I knew which cut of pork butt to get the Boston, butt. I knew how to go get that, the bone in, you know, and then I knew like, I like the mustard slather personally. And then I was just making my own rub. Like this is when Susie had cooked all week and she wasn't cooking on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd, I'd pull out the pork butt and I just make my own rub of just paprika, um, not even smoked paprika, um, brown sugar, salt and pepper. And that was it. Just like a simple rub. And then I'd put it out on the smoker, um, probably like midnight, 1am and then kind of sleep on my couch and babysit it a little bit. 
and uh we're, we're eating that the next afternoon and it was just like once i once i figured out the simplicity of it it, it, it is a lot of work but once you learn it it really is when you're not doing competition at home backyard it, to me it's really simple now like i don't even have to babysit it anymore like i can just season something and throw it on and you know i i, I don't even put a thermometer probe in it i just go check out check it check it open it up six hours later oh yeah give it a little longer make sure the bark's set and then you know wrap it in whatever and then and then a few hours later i'll start checking it to see when it's coming up to 200 or so and then i i just slowly watching her and she she obviously coached me i'd ask questions but i really did figure it out but then i got really intrigued because we got a uh, kamado style smoker um, and I tried ribs and pulled pork a couple times on that and I just couldn't manage it very well. And it came out like it tasted, it literally tasted like a campfire. Like it just wasn't good. Like I got the temps right and it shredded and the ribs were tender, but it just didn't taste good to me. And then I learned more about like fire combustion and, and managing the, how you put the coals in. And then, um, yeah, this was years later, just last summer. Our friends up in uh, northern Utah, Salt City Drum Smokers, he, he put my favorite color is like that baby blue, like powder blue or whatever. And I just saw it and it caught my eye. I'm like, I have to have that. I messaged him like, how much? And he told me, I'm like, done. So I, I Venmoed him money and that weekend I went and picked it up. And um, just getting that and, and he kind of gave me some pointers, Trevor up there. Um, and uh, it turns out I'm not so great at managing fires like people say like rusty you've said you can just you know set the vents and it just goes mm -hmm. and i did a couple test runs with no meat and i set the vents and it didn't just go two hours <laughs> later my fire was out and i tried um, it two or three times and i just like couldn't get it so finally i'm like i'm gonna buy one of those dumb barbecue gurus and then <laughs> it just like I, yeah. I plugged i put the barbecue guru on and i set the temperature and i'm like okay this is incredible i'm hooked right. so I'm, I use the crutch of a barbecue guru or a thermal right. works, uh, billows. Um, mm -hmm. we have an offset Oklahoma Joe, a little cheap smoker. I threw the billows on that thing and we cooked beef ribs on it and it was incredible. So I, I just have learned that I like the taste of a live fire or charcoal meat when it's cooked properly. I like that flavor better than the pellet smoker. I love the pellet smoker. I'll cook on it any day of the week, but on the weekends, I just love cooking low and slow either on the barrel or an offset and the flate like the smells in my yard and the flavors of the meats like i love it and i prefer it and so that's what's pushed me to really get to know how to do it myself so great yeah that yeah. barbecue guru on that cell city drum smoker i'm telling you i'm <clears throat> it's i bypass my pellet smoker all the time for that just because the ease right. of use and the flavor is unreal yep so I go to my, I, I use something similar on my Weber kettle. I use the flame boss, but they're all yeah. the same. It doesn't matter if you have a control unit on like a drum or anything like that it is completely game changer. You will not lose control of your fire at all. But, um, but kind of back to the topic, Kimmy, have you ever tried to take over the grill? You know what? A couple times Rusty had me like watch the grill, watch it for him, like watch the temps or uh, like spritz of pork or change, like change meat like take it out and wrap it and then put it back in like i've done that a couple of times but honestly not much more than that i i mean as long as he gives me very specific directions i'm on it and i will I'll watch it and make sure it gets done but uh, more than that eh. she hates cooking though she really does I'm like that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the same that. ballpark as my wife yeah like i'm like oh thank I'm goodness for traeger's whatever <laughs> fancy name they call it all of their their wi-fi their wi-fi stuff yeah. <laughs> literally i'm like okay i'll push those buttons and watch the camp but <laughs> other than that like i don't need to be messing that up well see you. this is where technology is actually coming kind of cool nice. you know like you could like me at work i can be like hey babe can you go out there and throw the pork shoulder on and i'll take control of it you know it's, simple yeah. technology is really cool and i know the barbecue guru has the cyber queue i'm not sure exactly how they break their downs flame boss a lot of these companies are coming up with this really cool technology like literally you can cook anywhere in the world almost as long as you have somebody to put that meat on the grill and take it off it's it's awesome they're sending they have a the barbecue guru has a brand new product that they're launching really soon they're supposed to send me one i talked to the barbecue guru owner on the phone last week and he's supposed to send me one so i hope he does yeah anyway it looks really cool it's supposed to be like all like 
Wi-Fi app enabled everything. You can change yes. it from your phone and all that. So I'm excited to use it. That's the one problem I have with the Guru is I don't like the Wi-Fi connectivity on it right now. So hopefully they improve that. But I don't care. I don't need it. I just have it out there and it beeps at me. So yeah, exactly. I don't use Wi-Fi at all. I, I'm not. That's why I use the Thermwork Smoke products all the time because I just like to have the thing with me or hear the beep. I don't. I just I'm can't be on my phone besides yeah. most of the time it's then my phone's all greasy and got barbecue stains on it and... <laughs> yeah that's a there's a new um that's the job. <laughs> we work with we work with camp chef smokers a lot we love them um they just barely released a new wi-fi um controller and all that stuff and like people complain because i've tried it i'm like I'm like, oh, it didn't link up. Like, and it's just having a lot of connectivity issues because it's brand new. They'll work out the kinks eventually. And a lot of people are complaining about it. And I'm just like, I don't even care. Like, I don't even use the probe in my meat. Like, I don't check the temperature of the grill. Like, I just use my Thermalworks smoke, make sure everything's on. And like, I just, I just don't care. Like, I'm not checking stuff on my phone. Right. I, and I think when you're first starting out, I think it's really helpful for you to learn. But after a while, like, you just, it just becomes second nature and you're, you, you know, what's going on. So yeah, it, that, helps, yeah, it helps you get started and, and understand where things yeah. are. And then eventually just kind of move away from it. That's yeah. That's true. But, yeah, that, but um, so I can't lose it. Even if I'm for light, like I have to have it on comps all the time. And I, and I know better, but at the same time, I don't want it to go down for some reason. And, you know, cause sometimes, you know, barbecue competitions, you're out there. Oh yeah. You're like Sterling Smith. You're like, Hey, Smitty was on more chat and chat and chat and chat and chat and chat. And you're like, Oh crap, my pit. <laughs> like, yeah. So I like to have things beeping at me all the time still, but at home, yeah, you can definitely learn to, you know, like a lot of times like I'll cook and I'll use like a tablespoon, but I kind of got an idea what a tablespoon is in my hand, you know, kind of same but, concept. But Brandon hit a good point right there. That new thermal work smoke X is an amazing feature. If you don't have anything Wi-Fi, um, that smoke X is awesome. I, I drove a mile, a half a mile from my home with it in my car before I lost connectivity to, with it. So, yeah, it's cool. It's really. I almost got to Walmart. Oh, so close! <laughs> you almost made it to Walmart. Huh? I could go to Walmart with that. I would. Oh, but it was like it's like a half a mile, and there's everything a freeway. You know, I went under an overpass, and I still could read it. So, yeah, that thing nice. is an awesome feature. You can go on a bike ride around your neighborhood, walk around your neighborhood, and still be able to monitor your grill. It's, you can't make adjustments, but you at least can see. Oh man, it's caught fire! I better hurry home. <laughs> <laughs> fire yeah <laughs> son hold this fire extinguisher yeah so let's talk about like um what what do you guys expect as a spouse on i guess communication communication in my household is very poor like i said earlier in the podcast <laughs> yeah on my end i'm like i forget Specify to tell my that. wife that i have a barbecue event or something There's going on google calendar yeah that's what you google use. calendar <laughs> then you share your information everything on you guys both have the same calendar every time rusty puts something in it shows up on my calendar so if i have to make plans i'm like my oh right, i forgot to look yeah, at yeah my, my wife doesn't use her phone to her full I'm ability with that stuff. I, 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 and we were too but it, it's such a habit now that i can't yeah. not do it here's the steps okay show low just popped up i'm gonna go to that boom go pay for the comp and I literally hit pay, go to my phone or on my computer, go to Google and then put it in. And then now she knows. And we have this rule that if it's in first, who it doesn't matter. I win. So if I get in first, you have to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, oh man. We would have a whole triage system for that. Yeah. So, I like <laughs> I like having it on the wall or something. Too. Yeah, I have a dry now, erase board I, I like on the wall. I just being able to see it right there that's our technique well, yeah. calendar sends you reminders you know what i mean you yeah. can share it with multiple people that's why we i mean that's yeah we do both we, we have to do both for me yeah <laughs> yeah we li we live and die by our phones calendars like we have multiple we, i think we have our google and we're both on samsung so yeah. both of those calendars are linked up so we'll end up getting like 18 reminders at the same time but like we we literally are at the point because we're like we're really we're we're small business owners and there's so much in our brains like i have to put everything like if we plan a date on friday night together i have to put it in or we'll forget that we're gonna do it like i almost have to put like a reminder in there to sleep and eat because like <laughs> like if if i if i make a plan with some friends to go play soccer or go to a movie and i don't put it in my phone i'll just forget and they'll text me like where are you and i'm like what are you talking about like you well, said you were coming <laughs> Oh yeah. Like if it's not in the calendar, like we don't do it. I had to put this this 3 p.m. mountain mountain time in the calendar. I would have forgot. Like I, it's been a little easier now with with the last few weeks with what's going on. Like because there's right. 
like everything's been canceled from kids soccer to drama and you know piano lessons and all that but yeah when everything's going and it we have to communicate really well about about what's going on or we yeah, yeah. It, get, it doesn't get done. However you do it. you like, yeah, I, I, I'm a little harder, I guess then. Cause I'm like, I want you to remind me like in person, yeah. <laughs> but I work, you know, 60 hours a week. So, and I'm I did like, make a mistake once. <laughs> I actually booked a barbecue event on our anniversary. That was a major. <laughs> <call on> my... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was bad. She, I'm surprised we're still married <laughs> after that one. She well, was, I wouldn't, but you, she, she tried to talk me to go to a barbecue competition in Colorado on her birthday. <clears throat> so, you know, she did. She's like, you should go. And I'm trying, I'm trying to plan a surprise party for her. I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't. Uh, she had a cornhall it, tournament that weekend. So, so it was all good. <laughs> yeah. But I bet, you know, having that kid Google calendar is a lifesaver because if you don't have it, then I, I, I'll forget. I'll forget to tell her. And I'm like, oh, no, sorry. I'm going to Montana for a comp this weekend. And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to so so for my work. And I'm going to be in Oklahoma. And I'm like, oh, crap. So we had to, had yeah. to, had to, had to. It's then, funny with, uh, I've got to tell this. Uh, everyone, like, I don't want to say this in a bad way, but every, like, Susie gets so much like positive everything that I, behind the scenes i have to give her such a hard time and i have to always share stuff that she like messes up on or whatever but like as far as talking about communication there will be times where like she's talked about oh tomorrow i'm i'm i gotta cook a brisket for this new rub i made or whatever and it'll be like 11 p.m the night before and i'm like i try to be like nice about it i'm like so you cooking that brisket hot and fast or we because usually she likes to sleep through the night she she has to get her sleep so it usually means that i'm up all night with it so uh, i always have to nudge her and remind her that we need to get a brisket on the smoker like right now if you want it done tomorrow while there's good light for taking pictures you know so right. That, oh, that there's yeah, taking pictures wow let's talk about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry i gotta to get i gotta get the new phones just for the photo yeah, options i know oh my gosh yeah sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i'm just like wow yeah i never knew that you had to take so many pictures of your food before you touch it you got <laughs> no we we're literally sitting around the table like knife and fork in hand and she's over standing on a chair and it's over in the windowsill oh, yeah. and she's taking pictures and we're like hurry up <laughs> i'm gonna move this outside by the chicken coop and we're gonna take a picture and we're gonna do this Mom, oh I'll yeah to eat it no, right. <laughs> gotta microwave it just to reheat it by the time you're yeah, done you, yeah that's that's the thing you gotta get used to i would say as a as a spouse is you know got, gotta make sure you photograph everything first yeah <laughs> yep Luckily, Rusty's nice, though. He always plates and gives a pretty plate to me. So he'll make a really pretty plate or whatever. Oh, yeah. It looks good. <laughs> and then he'll give that one to me that he photographed. So it's always, like, nice and presented well. And then his, he just, like, throws it on the plate. Yeah. Hey, Susie just, right? Susie just commented, see? I am the worst communicator. And I'm <laughs> It's okay, Susie. It's okay, Susie. <laughs> you should actually run in there and sit down with Todd. <laughs> There so behind the scenes on that video, Todd, that you guys had where you're sleeping on the couch watching it, it was probably her just just showboating, right? Going out there going, oh, see, I'm awake. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. Oh, now she's that uh, we're currently cooking uh we 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 got a, a whole shoulder from a from a pig from a local source, um, just actually up the street from us. Um, and so we've been curing it for the last like 15 or 16 days and it's out on the smoke right now. So hopefully she's oh, tending man. that a little bit. Oh, we're man. trying to, we're taking a, this pork, this whole ham, this whole brined pork shoulder ham all the way to shredding. So we're having po pulled ham is uh, it's Caitlin McCleary's idea. She oh, showed yeah. us. So we're going yeah. for that. Yeah. If, uh, my buddy Chad did it. It was absolutely, it's unreal. So we're going to put them on. We're going to put the ham on teriyaki burgers, like Hawaiian oh. burgers. Nice. Oh man. Nice. What time's dinner? Yeah. Yeah. Five o'clock, but it's right. social social distancing. Sorry. It's all right. I'll sit in your front uh, porch. I'll sit on the front yard. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine>. in <laughs> yeah. But uh, right. honey, uh Anthony and Rusty are both here. One's in the back and one's in the front. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh 
Let's touch a little bit on this. What a lot of spouses don't understand about barbecue is the financial obligations that we put ourselves oh in. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, how to bring the worst that part in. of all of this. <laughs> yes, the worst part of all of this. Uh, um, did you want to touch on that first? Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's obvious that like with a, a lot of things, I know it started out as a hobby. We talked about how it's not anymore. So that's even more so a financial obligation, but with any hobby or anything that you like to do a lot that becomes a lifestyle, it's money's involved, you know, and it is, it is expensive. It is expensive to do. I mean, I think that you, there's ways, there's ways that you can cut the cost down and things like that. You know, if you're not trying to do the competition stuff and everything, obviously everyone here is kind of in a different category than maybe everyone else, you know, um, you don't have to spend a ton of money, but if you do want to get involved in all the competitions, I mean, you heard these guys talk about how many smokers they have and the meat is very expensive. And I did used to feel kind of bad because I wasn't working as much back when he started. And I was like, Oh my gosh, how in the world are we even going to be able to oh, you're really gonna spend put all this together? Hard you hard know, it? what the freak? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What are we talking about right it's now? It's A nine out of Pensacola, <laughs> Snake River Farms out of Idaho. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just the competitions are expensive, but backyard. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm looking right now. I was talking. We're running down the list of this week what we're gonna cook, man. I'm just thinking in my head, that's a lot. You know, that's a lot. We're yeah. doing these like virtual competitions, you know, and that's gonna cost, and we had to go buy, you know, whatever for it. But just typical, you know, just buying meat, you know. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I think that's a good topic for you guys. Maybe for another podcast is you know how do you how do you do the kind of this type of stuff on a budget if you're just doing it for your family or whatever you know yeah it is hard. What about uh, you, Todd? <laughs> oh man, um, well I don't know. I've got a different perspective on it really because right. I was it's like I was working full time as a CPA and I was just like funding a barbecue food habit that she, and she'd just like cook it for me. So I'm totally cool with it. I didn't have yeah. a problem with it. It yeah. was expensive mm -hmm. and it was actually nice when she was working, when she was working for Traeger, we got all anything she was doing for a recipe. We got fully reimbursed by them for the food cost plus paid for the recipe. So like nice. we, she, one day I came home and she had like this 30 day aged like ribeye roast thing and it was one of the best things i've ever had and it was like i, I don't know it was probably 100 to 200 bucks for the roast and oh, i just man. got reimbursed for it and so yes. but yeah it it was it was uh it was kind of fun as she was building her blog like paying for the website expenses website expenses like it, it i was totally okay with paying for those to s support her and she was showing me some input income projections of what it could be and so I, I was just super okay with it. I loved every second of it, watching her do that. So, well, there's a point too, that a lot of Tom people. Are my barbecue, barbecue sugar actually. daddy. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> Uzi. I really am babysitting a ham. Yes, <laughs> but you know, there's it, as much as it is expensive, it's actually really, really cheap if you think about it. Because if you want to go out and buy, let's say, a pork butt for like ten bucks, you know, and you feed a family of five like ours, there's still leftovers that you can have, or a brisket. You know, we talked with Susie on this live before and she really like got in my head about like thinking differently about the leftovers that I have. So I went and made a brisket shepherd's pie and it was mm. unreal. And it's just, we have so much in our fridge that it's, if you think about it, it's actually kind of cheap if you spread it out over yeah. the week. That's, you know? that's, we do have a lot of meat. So, and, and Rusty's found ways by like, uh, what is that thing called? Where you suck the uh, vacuum, vacuum sealing. Seal vacuum. <laughs> that is huge. Yes, yes. But Rusty vacuum seals it and it, it reheats really, really easy and it's still super good. If you just boil it in the, the, the bag, it's really See? yummy. She's so yes, there yeah, you go. The, yeah, 20 minutes, you boil it. I got it. Yeah. But then you know, making stuff with it. Oh, yeah, and it goes it goes forever. Yeah. 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 Yes. Too. If you invest in some forever. things like that up front, yeah. like your sous vide or a way to, you know, heat yeah. it back up using what you make, then your, your costs aren't so astronomical, you know, cause right. you really are yeah. using it. So. But I think you or make sausage, you know, I mean, right now when we have pork left over, we made how much sausage would last us a month, you know, Gosh, so much. we're about to make some sausage with leftover brisket tri trimmings. And that's going to be freaking 40 different sausages, you know, that, 
we just freeze and I, it's just trimmings. So and then you go freezer shopping. Then you have a collection of smokers and a collection of freezers. We have you know? three freezers <laughs> and they're chuck full right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. about it, it goes a long way. It's yeah. different over here. So we, I, we always know that in the next few days, even tomorrow or later in the day, another big cook's coming. <laughs> she's just, she's just always got to be cooking and coming up with recipes. So um, our neighbors are well fed. So we <laughs> rarely, Same we rarely, <laughs> yeah we rarely keep anything like our direct neighbors next door we're just always sending the kids over with meat plates so we wow. keep them we keep them happy our, our our neighbors will be sad to see us move <laughs> if you ever have any extra rusty and i will be there to pick it up trust us <laughs> <laughs> yeah Barbecue. yeah definitely so but yeah it's, it's it's kind of that way if you really think about it um we were trying to break that down and I was actually reading an article once where barbecue is one of the cheapest things you can do because you can hold it so well and, and there's so much of it, you know, and, and it's some, if you really, really try at a very low cost. So especially like Costco yeah. and things like that. Right? I think when you, when you're thinking of it on the competition side though, where you're, you're taking yeah. your, you're, you're taking, I mean, time is money, right? You're taking time away from your family and then you're buying like super duper incredible briskets and, and the different meats yeah. and then you go and you, you don't if you don't get any winnings you know yeah. then yeah those are definitely two whole different worlds for sure yeah, yeah. it's it really <laughs> does suck when you spend 500 dollars on a competition and you don't get any calls i've been there before and you just kind of bite the bullet and like uh, yeah. the thing is if you go crazy like getting those a9s out you're spending 1200 bucks at a comp you know yeah Easy. exactly yeah, yeah. travel travel how much it costs to get the competition yeah. all, the, all the rubs yeah. i mean like i told todd like it's a sign it's like barbecue it's like competition barbecue is like frankenstein barbecue you know you have all these moving parts in it that you have to connect together and it's like so much stuff you know right. and then my, my teammates like well i'm gonna go buy this stuff i'm like all right 250 dollars yeah. just to get all the rubs and sauces so well just even, just even for example just when we tell somebody how to cook a brisket or whatever, Susie's recipes are so like easy and financially not expensive at all. But on the competition side, I'm telling somebody how to cook a competition brisket. You're sixty dollars into a Costco brisket. You're probably another forty dollars in rubs, and then you talk about your fuel. So that brisket turns out to be in one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's just at home cooking, you know. Um, Todd has the, the whole other side is you guys are recipe developing. You know, you guys have but like 30, Susie called here, like the yeah. grocery list just for yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's Mace is an expensive spice, you know, like, yeah. but then, but then on the back end for her, her viewers, Oh, it's just a cup of brown sugar, you know, a couple, couple cloves of garlic, you know, it's not that expensive on the viewer side, but on the development side, it's just ridiculous. I, I can't even imagine on a yeah. recipe development, side on how much it costs. Yeah, how does that look for you guys? I mean, as far as recipe oh, yeah. development, are you guys just trying to like cycle through the same stuff or do you really go to the store every day and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to try this oyster sauce on this. Or <laughs> no, I, I don't think we're ever looking for crazy ingredients to try. Um, we there's a, there's a few tools out there that show us. So when we're building a website post, we really want to, we want to, we want it to be helpful for people and we want we want eyes on it. So we will, there's some tools out there that show you like what people are searching for and how many people are searching for it, right. To help our search engine optimization. So, um, a, a lot of our posts are built around that. Um, but she wants to make, so if a lot of people are searching for, you know, smoked ribs, she wants to develop, like, I think, I think if you search smoked ribs, her three, two, one, uh, recipe ranks number one right now. Um, and it, but it, it's super detailed and it's super helpful and we get a lot of positive feedback on it and, and I forget where, oh, but yeah, so we, there's that side of it, but there's also the creative side. Like the one day she wanted to, um, stuff a chicken breast with a jalapeno popper and then wrap the whole thing in bacon. And, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, let's do that. <laughs> and, and, it, and it was super good. So she just has this, this, this crazy mind. Uh, and she just has ideas and then she implements them and it's usually the first try to be honest i've i've rarely seen except for when she was doing her mixes for when she was going to bottle the sweet rub and chicken rub and beef rub and her sauces that we were going to sell to people 
that's when she really did multiple iterations of it to perfect it. But like when, honestly, when she's coming up with something like that bacon wrapped jalapeno popper stuffed chicken, that's a mouthful to say. It was, (laughs) it was the first try. Like she didn't even have to try again. Like it's just everything she does. She just, she just has this mind that can come up with these recipes. I'll tell one story real quick on it. Um, one of my favorite things she's ever made is this, um, salmon rub, salmon seasoning. And we, so one day, a few years ago, we were at her mom and dad's house, um, pulled out, uh, her mom pulled out a salmon filet. Usually her dad was in charge of the grilling, but even her dad has like said, no, Susie, please you're you're on. Um, and her mom was like, I don't know, just come up with a seasoning for it and go grill it. Like, you know what you're doing. And I watched her just walk in her mom's pantry pull out some crazy things like brown sugar and dried basil. She pulled a lime out of the fridge, got salt, pepper and all that and mixed up this, the salmon seasoning went out and grilled it and she brought it in and we all bit into it. And it was like, like the most amazing salmon I've ever had in my life. Like, and cause she, and she just pulled random stuff off of her mom's pantry. Like that's, that's what's the genius of her is she can just do stuff like that. I don't understand that. I really want to be on that level. That would be cool. Uh, Me too. Maybe I'd enjoy it. That's a gift. <laughs> it is. It really is a gift. You can I never go wrong with salt and pepper. So nervous. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I just step down. I can't. You, <laughs> Rusty, you're you're definitely a recipe type guy. Um, mm-hmm. I I never looked at a recipe until I was probably like 35 years old. Honestly. Um, I've always just freestyled. Yeah. And, I've and always freestyled. obviously got a gift. Yeah, but, I think <clears throat> all this stuff too. Some people just have a knack for, yeah. you know, flavors and putting things well, together. Come on. I was, I, when I was raised, I was raised in the best environment, you know, single trailer home, you know, it wasn't that well, but my dad was using ingredients like saffron and rice. Like that's where it developed from. Like we didn't have the fanciest stuff, but he was using ingredients like saffron. Like that's next level cooking <laughs> that I was ex- exposed to and like that's kind of where it came from was my dad was always just using what we had and that's how i learned how to cook in a way and the rest is history now i now i panic when i have to look at a recipe because i i'm like you rusty have to follow <laughs> it straight to a t or it's not going to be right yeah but when i cook on my own it doesn't even i don't even think about it twice i just whatever is available i throw in there <laughs> no we love it people all the time will be like oh i made this uh i made this thing and but I substituted this for this and I changed this step yeah. and like, it was still like, it was so yeah. good because I didn't have this ingredient or I didn't have time to do this two hour step or whatever. And it yeah. just still turns out because she just like, is so good at detailing out. Well, yeah, she, gives, it, so. she, she gives that foundation, that yeah. foundation. That's what I like about Susie's recipes is that it's a great foundation. You can always build from it and you can remove stuff too. If you don't like it, like for the, like she likes to use a lot of spice. People don't like rusty can't yep. even have pepper that they'll just remove <laughs> that they'll just remove the spice <laughs> part of the aspect of the recipe oh my gosh, so <laughs> i love pepper just no, no other spice like mild salsa <laughs> oh my gosh, get, dude. With my hey, not all mild salsa is the same okay it's- <laughs> no it's not <laughs> well that's pretty much coming up on our hour mark does anybody have any more comments one thing i want to know though is just uh just a, one last question i think is that if someone's watching this especially a wife or a husband that wants to show their significant other um what kind of support like what kind of what have you guys gone through that maybe you guys see that you could tell them like what kind of support would you say uh, you give them how can you be yeah supportive how can you be supportive of them and, and a couple of like how how do you support them in their hobby because before this all happened, I I was the kind of guy that came home and said, "Hey, Kimmy, I want to be a taxidermist." And then a day later, I'm like, "Guess what? Hey, Kimmy, I want to work on cars." And oh my and, gosh! And hey, Kimmy, I'm going to go buy all this stuff to do this, and it just never would oh, pan wow. out. No, oh, no wonder you guys are friends. <laughs> a lot of different things. Okay, multiple interests. This guy, like hundreds. And so, got- so I came to her with barbecue, and I'm trying to convince her to buy this. You know, I'm hey, I'm going to buy this smoker and. Da, 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 and we get started and and she was super hesitant and you know because i ne- i don't you know i've always barbecued but this is, i never took it as seriously i was always just love to do the home cook thing so you know to come to her and say hey i want to make this into something you know that took a lot from her because her life had to change a little bit actually quite a bit um so what would you guys say to someone like 
that you know in that situation like the time when susie got the traeger or the time when anthony came to you and said hey i'm you know i'm gonna do this this weekend you know looking back on that now what kind of stuff would you tell tell that these yeah, advice you can give to someone like that um i'll start um i i think i think it from for me it was more when she wanted to so when traeger when when traeger moved their corporate offices kind of changed their marketing team and everything like when jeremy came in and took over um, that's when they, they, I think they fired Susie's boss and they offered her to, to come in and, and interview and, and work in the offices in sugar house. Um, she just didn't really want to do that. She liked working from home. And so, um, we were actually on vacation and we were just sitting on a bench by a beach and she's like, just kind of in a weird transition. And she has now all this knowledge and love for barbecue, um, specifically for the community wants to help be a part of the community. Um, she says, what do I do? Like, I, I think I'm just going to start my own website. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then she started doing all this research on food blogging specifically on, and, and how much, and how she, she literally Googled how to make money up with a food blog. And then she just did the work. Um, and she was showing me like, Hey, look, this is what these bloggers, this, this husband and wife blogger team, this is their income. They're, they're showing their income. This is how much they're making. And I'm like, that's cute. Like, good job. Like <laughs> that's, that's a great, that's a great dream to have. But like, I, I'm a, I'm a CPA. I'm like 10 years into a career. Like uh, uh, that's cool. Like do what you want to do. Um, and I, I, it's not that I wasn't supportive. I was skeptical that she could turn it into what it's become, which is, you know, t like it's a monstrosity compared to even what we were talking about at the beginning. So, which is incredible and all credit to her. Um, but I was, I was continuously supportive. Uh, I'd never made fun of her. I'd tease her every now and then, of course. But um, yeah, I, I, I think no matter what it is, no matter, and this is just a general kind of going deeper into having a relationship with someone is just like, always just be supportive and offer to help and be there for them um, and actually show up for them. I think that's, I tried to do that as much as possible. It was easy for me because she's cooking me brisket and pulled pork all the time and steak. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but yeah, just be supportive and, and, and tell her, tell her, tell her or him that you're, that you support them and then show up for him, go to competitions, learn how to trim chicken thighs, um, learn how to in, inject and cut down a pork butt, you know, like, like take in, invest and in, and like really learn and get into what they're into. You might not like it, but like, just enjoy being there and spending time with them and supporting them and, and being there with them. And that's what life's all about. Like that's, that's when you're going to develop happiness and a develop a deeper relationship with them. So that's my, right. yeah. and I, I, I quit my job after sitting on a beach too. So <laughs> <laughs> you should not do that. don't go to beach if you're in a life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would beach. totally second that for sure. I think that very well said, I like the part, at the beginning, I would always encourage him to, you know, do your, do your, do your research, do, you know, get the, get the information that you need first. Cause there's nothing, you know, like, I guess it drives me crazy more that like, Hey, I'm going to do this, you know, but you don't have a plan, you know, develop a plan. And I think in the beginning, that's how I supported Anthony is like, you know, let's, let's look into this, let's research this, but he's a lot. It sounds like rusty, you know, in that he has, always had kind of like, I want to do this. No, I want to do this, you know, and whatever Anthony does, he takes it, you know, to the, to the extreme and to the fullest, like he's not going to do a half job at it. So I think that planning and that research and just getting the information first, you know, and I love helping him do that. Um, it was definitely his turn. You know, I was a, a aerial uh, performer before, you know, he started doing this for years and he kind of followed me around and supported me and went to all my competitions and my performances all over. And <laughs> I became a professional rigger, by the way, I could rig uh, up yes, acrobatic stuff. So. Photos. He was a <laughs> professional photographer. And so, you know, I think a lot of things that we've done for years have sort of been in my court. So it was his turn. So I'm having fun. This is great. Yep. <laughs> Rusty supported me. And many adventures, many adventures, like through my Senegens business, through my like makeup and my nail stuff. He supported me through cosmetology school. I mean, all the things Rusty supported me to the end. And so I feel like 
yes, I had a little bit of a like a hesitation because he does get into things and then he he switches his attention. But barbecue yep. is something that uh, he's been passionate about from the start and he has continued on this path and he's made it clear that this is what he wants to do. So, I mean, I have supported him. I always support him. Um, and I, as much as he wants me on his barbecue team, I don't know that it will happen, Todd. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we will see how this progresses, but I am 100% here to support him. I think that, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's much easier that way. It's easier in our relationship. If I am that support for him, um, it, we're much happier. If I like make an effort, I do go to competitions, but I don't know about the cooking part. I'll be there for moral support and to tell the people that come up and talk that they can't talk right now. They come back. <laughs> <and> <laughs> um, but no, I, I do support Rusty and I would tell people it, you know what, this could turn into something more than just a backyard hobby. As you can see with our husbands, I mean, uh, all the husbands on this live <laughs> on something more so support them and don't don't shut it down because it maybe it is yeah. something more than a hobby this time no. todd's right like if you don't have the support for your spouse or your bff or whoever it is that you're spending your time with it's like you know that's not gonna take you very far so be there yeah. for them but make <laughs> even, a plan even if you have to fake the support at the beginning, like fake it till you make it, it'll yeah. happen. I promise. I mean, I mean I, maybe it was kind of fake in the beginning, but now I'm like, okay, okay, what are you doing now? I'm about it. I'm like, I'm gonna go to a barbecue competitions. Like, all right, okay, go ahead. Uh, but then, I got, and then all of a sudden, yeah, words, she's I'm like, like, no, go. I mean, go, please. I would, I would watch. We'll do all this stuff, or I'll take the kids with me to my mom's, and you guys can go and do this. And it's it, she's just now she's like proactive in making it comfortable for me. So it's super cool. Yeah. It was awesome. Hey. Like I, I can remember a time um, Susie reached out to some local producer right after she started Hey Grill Hey after she left Traeger. Um, she reached out to all the TV producers here in Salt Lake and was like, hey, like I want to come do like one of your talk shows, like cook on a talk show or something. Yeah. And then one of them, Channel 4, there's a show called Good Things Utah with those ladies on it. They invited her like immediate. <laughs> they invited her like immediately. And so me and some family and friends went and watched her. They have little bleachers you can sit on and watch live. Um, when the, when the, this was her first time ever being on camera, when it turned on, she just like lit up and she, she controlled the, she controlled it and it was awesome. And she like me and me and some of her family members like looked at each other. were like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And then like, and then as soon as she, she came off the stage and she was like shaking, she's like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And then even like a couple, like after a couple of times, she's like, I'm going to have my own food network show someday. I'm like, okay, Dang. like that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know, that's, 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 it could be, you know, we, yeah. we're like this close to her having her own food network show. Yeah. Like That'd if, be this, awesome. if yeah. this dumb pilot will air that we filmed <laughs> last year, she's been a part of multiple pilots now, but none of them have really picked up. So if you know, we're, we're, she's just so oh, close. So close. Yeah. yeah. So like just being able to see, and then when, you know, when she creates a recipe and watching her be creative, like just watching her shine in these moments. I mean, that's like, I mean, you, I just fallen more in love with her, you know? So like, why would you not want to experience that with your significant other, you know? So yeah, sometimes you surprise each other, you know, yep. let, let, let the other person unlock their potential. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Wait. perfect. Well, uh, I guess that's the end of this. Um, Go ahead and plug where we're at, Rusty. So What's we where we're at? Yeah, go give us our plugs. Oh, you mean all that fun stuff? Yeah, okay. all the fun stuff. Podcast.com, you can see all those fun things there. It's all pot. Everything Pitmasters is at the pitmasterspodcast.com. You can go to follow us on our socials and all the places you can listen to the podcast. And we also do this once a week uh, where we'll bring in different um, people and different experiences in barbecue and talk to them and hopefully you guys learn a lot so keep uh we'll be posting scheduling these more often so you guys will know way in advance when they are hopefully and then uh you guys can tune in and, and hopefully you guys are learning a lot and then todd you're just hey grill hey and <laughs> yeah i mean I, I have my own yeah public instagram profile at todd bullock i have like 600 followers it's a pretty big go. deal there no but go. um just, I mean, it's it's a family business. Um, hey, grill, hey, 
uh patio provisions is where we sell um her rubs and sauces and we're coming out with the different few items coming out we've got some custom bear paws coming out we've we're trying to develop and manufacture some grilling tools that don't even exist that we uh we hope will be awesome and will help the barbecue community i have so one patio, for you. what's that i have one for you <laughs> i've developed it I, I just don't know how to get move it forward so okay we, let's we, chat we I, yes I, i've got the i've got the right people <laughs> i've got yes. <laughs> i've got engineers and people to source stuff it's awesome so we yeah, can do that yeah. and then the grill squad is the online barbecue school so yeah which support is great. support any of those then you're supporting Susie, which is in turn supporting me so <laughs> and you can watch this tonight on the Food Network at eight o'clock. So don't forget yep. that. Eight yeah. p.m. Mountain Time. Beat Bobby Flay. Susie's on there. So Yay. and then make sure you get on support your local barbecue restaurants as well. Yes, so Bandera, awesome. Bandera. Yeah, scenes, guys. But my scenes. favorite part of place, uh, Bam Bams. Again, we'll go through all the rest. But man, get out there and support your guys. We need you right now. So and then, yep. uh, and I think next week's show is you and I are going head to head on a steak cook off. I think oh, we're gonna try. Yeah. What? So wait. So oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So cool. All righty, guys. Thanks. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Todd. Everyone. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, we really appreciate your time, man. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Always a pleasure.